Hello, today I'd like to pose, I guess, the first sort of design decision, the first call for feedback about something uh, relating to the game. So, if, if you played the demo, basically there's no run button, and, and um, Adam, the, the character, walks fairly slowly. And, to some extent, I, I like this, and it's deliberate, um, because... Uh, well, you, you can sort of stop and smell the roses, or, um, I don't know, what's the, the horrific analogy of that, but it sort of, to me, it sort of builds suspense. You are slowly pot plodding along, and, and you don't know what's around the corner, and I, I don't know if you've seen the movie Audition, uh, but it's awesome, and, and it, it plays with the idea of pacing in terms of suspense and horror, and I think it, it does it really masterfully, so if you haven't seen it, I, I strongly recommend the movie. But uh, certainly I think, to some extent, the game needs a bit more interactivity. Um, I think interactivity is, is key to making it feel like a game and to make it feel like you're experiencing something. So. Uh, a good analogy is uh, Telltale games. So if you look at Telltale, I think maybe there was one game in between, but they released Jurassic Park the game and later The Walking Dead. And it's commonly agreed that Jurassic Park the game is terrible. I mean, I don't think it's terrible, terrible, but most people didn't really like it. And The Walking Dead, most people absolutely loved it. And certainly I'm not going to disagree with that. The Walking Dead was great. But I think, and, and after playing both and thinking about it a lot, I think one of the main problems with Jurassic Park the game versus The Walking Dead the game is that you have no, there, there's very limited interactivity. And so uh, there's certainly a lot of quick time events and, and uh, Walking Dead has the, the branching narrative and, you know, Doc will remember that, you know, that sort of thing, which really helps. But fundamentally, I think the main flaw in Jurassic Park the game is that you can't walk around. You basically don't have character control. And I think taking that away sort of ruins the, the idea of, of interactivity and controlling the character. So while, of course, you know, we have walking and you can control the character and certainly that's one of the the most important mechanics i think in, in our game since we want to focus on exploration and not combat but there's also the idea of a run button and so this is sort of where i get stuck in terms of, of designing because like if you look at a run button in every game ever you're always running you're always 100% running, you know, you just put a piece of tape on it or it's cap locked and you turn it on, right? Like, there's no incentive to walk. And, and I feel like if you're always running, that to some extent ruins the pacing. And so, certainly I have a few ideas about this. Um, and, uh, well, I want to get your, your idea, your feedback, your thoughts on this. So, firstly, I like the idea of an endurance meter. Um, and, well, I'll get more into this. Endurance meters for running are usually terrible. But, like, if you look at me or any person, well, certainly I'm very terrible at running. Like, I have terrible asthma, and then I also have these, like, hip problems and leg, knee problems. I suck at running. I can't run very far for very long. You know, and so I, I, I almost like that, bringing that into the game is, you know, having the main character be an asthmatic. And so, you know, you can't sprint forever. You have to, you know, just run a little and then you're huffing and puffing. And I mean, certainly I think um, that uh, that seems really good up here in a design perspective, but if you look at other games, it almost always sucks. So, like, Grand Theft Auto had the thing where, you know, like, you run and then you slow down. But, I mean, certainly they had the large open world, so uh, it can be more tedious. But, like, even in the survival horror genre, you look at Condemned, 
and it was just like a frustration like, oh, I can't run, I have to stop holding the run button, okay, I'm gonna run again. So it didn't really achieve much, so I'm not sure that's the best idea. Uh, my other idea is to deter the player from running through gameplay. So, for example, like Last of Us. So in Last of Us, uh, you know, there's enemies and they can hear you, and so you have to um, walk instead of run. And certainly, I, it would be easier if that would be on a button rather than the, the analog precision, and certainly we would do it on, on the... Um, analog stick, but I think I'm not 100% happy with that idea either because I feel like then all of a sudden it, it throws a bunch of stealth mechanics in the mix. And certainly I, I want to have some stealth mechanics and, and I want to um, do more in, in that regard. I mean, the game isn't going to just be the player walking around and picking up objects, there's going to be more to it, and monsters, and all sorts of things, but it's just, for, for the demo, we, we didn't have time to do that, but, um, but with respect to the, um, the, the running, in terms of, of putting it on a, on a button, like, uh, and, and, you know, adding these stealth mechanics, it, it it's something that you would have to do everywhere, or at least there would have to be the threat of, of it everywhere. Because, like, if, if it just happened, like, in one or two setups, then you're going to run all the time. And then when you hit those one or two setups, you're going to be like, ah, oh, crap, this is the time I'm not supposed to run. Uh, whereas, you know, you almost want sort of this constant threat for not running. So... I don't know, that's what I've been thinking. Certainly, a uh, run button isn't next on my schedule, so I'm, I have a lot of time to, to think about it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts.